Thank you for staying with us. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Monday declared that the governorship elections in Adamawa and Kebi states inconclusive over what he described as irregularities that merged the poll in 18 local government areas of the state. The returning officer of INEC in Kebi state, Professor Yusuf Saidu, made the declaration on Monday in Benin, Kebi, the state capital. He said the electoral law gave him the power to declare the results inconclusive. For Adamawa State, the returning officer, Professor Mohamedou Mele of the University of Meduguri, declared the election inconclusive due to the margin of votes. The candidates of uh, the All Progressives Congress APC in the state, Senator Aishatu Dahiru, famously known as Binani, scored 390,275 votes, while the incumbent uh, Governor Amadou Fintiri of the People's Democratic Party uh, candidate pulled 421,524. Professor Mille said, as stated in the electoral laws, the, <clears throat> the margin between two candidates is lesser than the total number of collected PVCs in areas where elections were not held. The election is declared inconclusive. He said elections were not held in 47 wards, affecting 69 polling units, which gives a margin of 31,249. Now, the total number of PVCs collected in places where elections were not held amounted to 37,016. Joining us in the studio to discuss this development in these two states is a lawyer and social development advocate, GD. Ulugu. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good, Good morning. morning. Good to see My you. Pleasure. Good to see you. Right. We have seen outcomes of the election and we are seeing some peculiarities with the voting patterns and uh, how things have gone when you place them side by side the law. What are your impressions of what is coming out of uh, Kebi and Adamawa states? You know, like the electoral officer <coughs> mentioned, he has a legal framework mm. that has enabled him as a um, representative of INEC to come to that decision. And I believe that is the area we should focus on. Mm. The laws are made for the people. Yeah. In fact, in January 2023, <clears throat> uh, the senior silk, Olani Peku, mm. raised a concern that if you look at Section 65, of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, that there is a leverage result for INEC there uh, to review results within two. And I have taken time to look at some provisions in that law. And if you look at the setting up of INEC by the Constitution, <coughs> is the only body established constitutionally to manage elections. And interestingly, if you go to that section uh, 65 I, I made reference to, uh, you will realize <clears throat> that, you know, you take it from 62 that was in the electoral uh, law, you realize that at the end of the day, if you are not pleased with the final conclusions from INEC, uh, you may proceed to the, the election tribunal mm. and other courts of competent jurisdiction. <clears throat> so that is where we are right now. So the ecosystem itself is driven by provisions of the law. And we've had to argue over Section 47 also enabling engagement of electronic devices, mm. to what extent, how should resource be transmitted. There's also a gap that, that is left to the discretion of INEC. So, and I've taken the effort to move forward into what we should expect, setting agenda. Mm. If you look at section four of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, you say that National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, you know, order and good governance of Nigeria. So when you look at all the infractions during these elections, then can we sit back? After all, the electoral law got amended in 2022. Can we amend for that and be specific? Now that we have adopted the beavers, the IREF, can we be specific? Mm. You know, can we amend again? <clears throat> because what, like this case of um, uh, Kebi State and Adamawa, no. right now, under the new law, overvoting 
will not be determined by the number of registered voters, mm. rather by the number of accredited voters. So there are improvements. And you saw a section of it also experimented with, which is that political appointee must resign. Mm. Then the other aspect of it that I've, I've, I've not been able to confirm whether it was perfectly tested is section three, subsection three, uh, that says that money should be made available to INEC at least a year before the election. So there are provisions in that law. So when we notice gaps, we try and upscale the laws. So those are the issues. But as we converse here, INEC has the authority to do what she, as a woman, as an umpire now, <laughs> is doing with our elections. And the, the point is that if you are not satisfied, election tribunal is waiting yeah. for the court. But and it, some may not want to go there. Mm. Some, you know, like in the case of uh, for your state, the governorship candidate of APC already congratulated uh, um, the sitting governor. Mm. And I, I'm not sure that NNPP is talking about going to court and things, but it's part of the ecosystem that you can still test these processes mm. through judicial interventions. Mm. All right, when you talk about uh, the law to be reviewed, to be specific, in a situation where we're working with technology, we understand our ecosystem, we understand the terrain that we live in, where things are not perfect. If we specify that, for instance, INEC should or must or shall, depending on the language that is used, transmit electoral results electronically and nothing else. If we keep that corridor that way, and on election day something happens, would it not create more challenge, legal legitimacy challenge, than what we have now? You know, <clears throat> when you talk about capacity, mm. if you are serious, you are serious. Let's come down to automobile technology. If your vehicle is a diesel engine, it's specified. If you put petrol, it's at your, at your own peril. You see, so we need to invest in whatever technology we are adopting, except we do not want to be sincere. We are discussing elections matters now. What about the Naira redesign and the cashless economy? Mm -hmm. By the way, the cashless uh, economy policy got introduced in 2012 in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It was first experimented in and some metropolitan areas before pushing it to so 12 years to 2023. And we found a situation where internet engagements almost crashed the banking facilities, despite the trillions of Naira we have already have invested into. So we need to get serious. Let's say this, Mr. Mike. It's, a, it, it's all about choice. I said it, you, you get to Dubai, I mean, from my own experience, the capturing of your bold data included taking your eyeballs impression. You may go and burn your thumbprints on a hot object, but will you remove your eyeballs and replace it just because you want to go into crime? So it's all about what we decide to do. It's the same thing we, we have everywhere. And people have, so, some have suggested, in fact, I think at the time, CCTV were installed in Abuja. CCTV will help you in crime fighting. In Dubai, some guys went robbing a bureau de chan. And within hours, they were picked up. That mm. is the power of, you know, uh, footages from. But where's the electricity mm -hmm. to power the CCTV? Mm -hmm. Some IT equipment were installed at the port to help fast track clearing of goods at the port. Did they ever function? These are issues. So if we are serious about it, and the National Assembly has a huge role to play. And I will explain further. We have 109 senators, 360 House of Rest members. And this 10th Assembly will be so interesting, mm. expectedly, mm. because we now have more than the two party state yeah. arrangement there. Yeah. And we have some, even if they are coming in as new weeks, we now have a colorful bouquet of legislators that mm. we sit down. Like I was joking somewhere, some of them had to come down from car to enter bus, to enter Kekemarua to win the election. <laughs> <laughs> through. So if they go there and fold their arms, and it's clear now 
that you might have been there for six times, a new person can come and bring you out. And that's an aspect I reserve for Enoch also. Irrespective of the lapses we've seen, I think these uh, elections has thrown surprises into the space. So we need to be serious and invest our, some of our leaders travel abroad. I mean, if you leave your country to go to the UK for medical care, it's because attention is given to the facilities there. And you appear to trust those facilities. You know, so these are, these are, these are issues. So when you make the laws, you know, despite all our arguments on whether you can sue Central Bank directly at the Supreme Court, we know that you can sue, you start from Federal High Court, but by uh, virtue of Section 232 of our Constitution, states can sue Federation. Mm. And there was a policy by the Federation carried out by CBN. At the end of the day, the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the land since 1963, pronounced, even though the presidency delayed in obeying. And you can see now that our economy is likely to have moved from recession to depression. So these are issues. So you must evaluate the ecosystem of these things to ensure you keep developing. In some countries of the world, uh, boarding passes are not done manually mm. anymore. Mm. You have on your phone, you swipe your phone, mm -hmm. you generate it you yourself. Generate it yourself. So you are not going to any human being to help you or so. And will you now say, uh, because you don't want to learn how to operate your phone, and you won't travel? Mm. If you must, you must. Mm. There are rules. At the time in this country, 17 persons may rush towards the bank door uh, to wrestle in. But now there are security uh, gadgets there. If you have a metal object, it will tell you, please exit the door and go yeah. and keep your metal. So these are issues. It's either we want to make progress. But don't let us also quickly run away from the fact that the Electoral Act that got amended in 2022 also went through a long process. So yeah. some of the politicians, in fact, not all of them are comfortable with some of the provisions in that law. Mm. And these are issues. And that's why I love this particular election. You are in that uh, chamber for a purpose. So it's either you add value or you devalue. Mm. So if you strengthen the system, mm. it makes it easier for you. If you don't strengthen it, you may be, become the victim. And that is where we are right now. So, so, so deployment of technology, we, we, we engage Beavers and this IRF for the first time mm. at the general elections. You know, we, it was tested in Edo State and Oshun State. So we expect to improve on this. But if you don't have the backup support, it's just an investment in futility. Earlier you spoke about specific, specificity uh, uh, with regards to the law. Uh, for situations, some of the lapses that we have seen. And I'm wondering what you are looking at with regards to what we have seen in Kebi and Adamawa State. So what would you like to see amended and how? Talking about having about 18 uh, local government areas, Ill Ill irregularities marrying the elections in 18 local government areas. How do you expect INEC to handle that? And if we are looking to amend the Constitution, the Electoral Act rather, to address matters like this, what are the specifics you are hoping to see? I mean, when you talk about irregularities, they are strong enough for the umpire. It's just like when you're having a football match and players started slapping themselves and kicking the referee. If the referee still has the strength, he <laughs> can mm -hmm. blow his whistle, draw out <laughs> yellow card, draw out red card. If you're not satisfied with the red card, you may appeal to FIFA. These are issues. There are rules and guidelines. But permit me to say this. We have given INEC that authority, and they have the benchmark that will be applied. But can we look at the macro level of our legal system? I've, I have you know, read threats. I have listened to you know, inciting comments. Do we have laws at the macro level that makes people to realize that being a top flight politician does not exalt you about the law, the concept of the rule of law? Mm. That if you incite people, you not even have the opportunity to participate in that election. That's what we are talking about. So we even have laws on ground. We have laws on incitement and everything that we can implement. So what are the challenges 
in the country is implementing our laws. But I also see that uh, being applied. For instance, the majority leader in the House of Reps yeah. that was alleged uh, to have harassed people with guns and mm -hmm. yes. some people died. His result has been held back by INEC and he is running through the mail of criminal justice value chain. Mm. He has been granted bail. So if politicians begin to realize that you cannot just take laws into your own hands, it will help us. There was a presidential election in China on the 10th of March, 2023. I'm not sure Mr. Mike read about politicians running around with talks, mm. threatening to shut down and things like that. You, you, so we you, argue, you and I think I listened to you earlier, to say that those nations have grown. Should we not also grow? The pictures coming from the most recent election took my mind back to the 1956 Kano riot. Mm. What led to it? A motion was moved in the Southwest Parliament that let's go for our independence from the colonialists. When it moved up north, they said they were not ready. And we started killing each other. Eventually, we became free in uh, 1960, politically. And here we are today. Look at the massive violence, you know, even soldiers killing, uh, fighting policemen. And, you know, no, 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 we need, we need to step forward. And again, I'm tasking the citizens and electorates, and that also has started. We need to put our leaders to accountability performance. We look at Benue State, for instance, because I sat down to evaluate what happened. Mm. A new person is coming in. We are not even considering whether he's married or not. He's a reverend father. Mm. So, you know, so the issues are, the senators are losing their seats. Yeah. Two new weeks coming in. So, in a way, while we are complaining about the lapses, logistics, and, you know, IREV of INEC, I think we should also sit down. There have been some surprises here. Look at what happened in South Dakota State. Mm. You know exactly. You know, so you you look at e all these. Zamfara, 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 Zamfara State. Yeah. Zamfara you know, State. I think Adamawa is still. Uh, yeah, Adamawa is still here. Yeah. Still here. Yeah. Plateau yeah. State. Exactly. Yeah. And look at the attention being given in Enugu, yeah. Abia. And mm -hmm. what has happened is that with the dual uh, transmission of electoral results, you can have your EC8 form to check with what is transferred to IREV. You see, so the party agents are expected to be part of the uh, value chain, right from the polling units and things like that. So you can ask questions. And that's why we have been appealing to some that it's not about, you know, hyped sentiments and things like that. Because one of the things we witnessed also is that a lot of parallel umpires mm -hmm. emerged online that were yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. their own you love soul, exactly. creating unnecessary mm -hmm. tension. And right now, from what we have monitored after monitoring the elections, people are going back to their businesses. So, mm -hmm. And I think that pushes us to expecting good governance in terms of electricity. And, then, and we should let our wonderful people also know that the outgoing president has signed some bills, about mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For instance, now electricity states should be able to generate, yeah. if it is allowed to stay, mm. power and transmit and distribute where the national grid is. Then the railway system is coming to the concurrent list, mm -hmm. you know, autonomy for state judiciary and then, you know, other very, and I also read one about food security. I think mm. we need that. <laughs> 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 now, so by and large, and again, we witness during these last elections, despite some pockets of apathy, that the awareness is, 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 is really getting uh, tougher. So let's just, and you, you look at Kano, after about 20 years yes. of active engagement, NNPP has gotten uh, the first governor mm. in Kano, and that was a massive victory. And again, you would have expected that the power of incumbency should you know, uh, prevail. Mm. But then, Kano had some pocket of violence and things like that. And the NNPP now, the Labour Party has come to challenge APC and PDP. Right. And I am advising other parties, don't 
don't go into recess after the elections. Mm. I've said that the United Nations has these sustainable development goals with 17 goals. 18 parties presented candidates for presidency during this election. One, a woman that they are still, you know, slugging it out now. Engage issues. What are the basic needs that we have? Health, education, food mm -hmm. security, good, strong social order, and things like that. And for the politicians and those who have, you know, won, been declared, I say congratulations. And those who have participated, I say kudos. I admire the the courage. And when it comes to conflict management, please, I think about five issues are crucial. Never ignore conflict, because mm. we saw a lot of that also during these elections. And identify what the issues are. You separate the issues from the personalities if you want mm. to achieve good results. Then bring parties together to discuss, prompt resolutions, and be sincere with implementing the resolution. And when you go through that you know, circle, you can now begin to enjoy what we call in public relations mutual goodwill and understanding. I mean, we are all Nigerians. And mm. For Ejide Ologun, I love this country. I've gone around from Arochuku to Mediburi to Saokoto to mm. Abia to you know, Kaduna, Bauchi, mm. Jaws. I've been everywhere. I love this country. And uh, let me also say to electorates, because we need to let us know. Now everyone is back to business. I should have mentioned who may not even know that you slap somebody on his behalf. <laughs> <laughs> he may be having dinner with Kwan Kwan so in Abuja now at their level. You know, they are friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so please let's let's let's, let's take it easy. But I, I appreciate the challenge that was thrown into these elections. And you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln. A one-time American president said the ballot is stronger than the bullet. So mm. our leaders are now beginning to realize that indeed mm. a vote the can count. Mm. So, all right. The, now the the one other thing I like to I like to ask ask is the issue of the law, that the provision of the law. There's a tribunal. You know, what if you're not satisfied with the system? I believe the wise men who put that together knew that there will be or there could be a situation where there is a, there's a contest and somebody feels that eh, everything didn't go down well. I need to challenge it. Now, we've seen out of this election issues here and there, people, political parties say, no, we will not accept this and so on and so forth. Some are already going to court. Yet, in going to court, we still see them, hear them say a lot of things, inciting people, creating, you know, chaos here and there. Mm. What, what do you make of this? Do we really have a perfect understanding of the fact that if you have sent, if you've gone to the court and you've said, I want to challenge this process, I should wait, sit down patiently and wait for the court to come up with their findings and verdicts. And that's why I made reference to the macro environment. Mm. It's, it's all about what we permit, you see. But we also call it emotional ventilation mm. in HR. But then it won't win you victory. Mm. And we had a matter with a big bank that said they could use 100 million to pursue 100,000. We kept quiet. In law school, we were taught to keep our gunpowder dry. In fact, at a point, the, the lawyer called, uh, why don't you mm. ask for damages? I said, thank you very much, Abby. Simply. Mm. And it went on for 15 years, all the way to the Supreme Court. And we won. Individuals versus a corporate body. And so, and that is what I have also observed. You see, if you don't divorce yourself from the storm, you may not be able to find an access to peace. All the parties have allegations against one another. Mm -hmm. Allegations of people thumbprinting without beavers. Mm -hmm. So, you now bring all this to the tribunal. It's not just coming to the law. You must defend your case. Mm. Effectively so. Okay. You, re you remember what we learned in Shakespeare, uh, Shylock, mm. who contracted for a pound of flesh. And the man got to court and the lawyer said, okay, you are entitled to a pound of flesh, bring your knife, cut it, but it's not in the agreement that you, should, you can shed blood. We have to so get your up. pound of flesh without blood. Mm. So, and that's why we also want to advise. It's a very good thing right. going to the tribunal. Right. But please, be wise, and let's come together to challenge leadership All right. to give us good governance in Nigeria. Jideo Logo, uh, lawyer and social development advocate, thank you for your time on the program. God bless Nigeria. Amen.